<laughs> we reserve the right to be wrong. A nice little punchline. The right to be wrong. Imagine that. How many people do you know who would happily subscribe to that little actress? All right. So human nature. Who are you? <coughs> well, naturalism based on science says that we are fully natural physical creatures. This is the big duh, right? Okay, <laughs> part of the natural world. We don't have souls. We're, we're physical through and through. Right? Okay. There's no evidence, as I said before, for immaterial souls or an involving mental agent that controls the brain and the body. Right? So the physical brain and body do it all by themselves, which is pretty amazing when you think about it, considering what we're capable of. That it's neurons, synapses, muscles, tendons that got everything working together to produce the culture that we have. That's part of the amazing story of naturalism. Now here's the connection part. Human nature. We are fully caused beings. Products of cause and effect. And we are completely products of conditions that we didn't choose. We come out of conditions that we didn't choose. Every single bit of us. So this connects us to the natural world. The social world. The physical world. The world of media. All the worlds around us. We come out of we are not self-caused. Self-causation, in any ultimate sense, is a logical impossibility. Why? Because you'd have to exist first to cause yourself. Bit of a problem, right? Okay. The brain, body, and beliefs and desires, all of what you are, are completely a function of, caused by your genetics, interacting with your environment. If we knew enough, we could trace that story of how you became who you are in every single respect. Okay? Our political beliefs, for example, the fact that we're all mostly liberal here, <laughs> are completely a function of innate personality traits interacting with life experience. Darrell talked about political uh, personality influence on beliefs that are uh, political affiliation. Life experience, peer group, in our current situation, political beliefs, we think that we sort of select them rationally. Well, in some sense we do, but not until we're given all of our predispositions biologically and culturally, socially, to take up a particular political stance, like liberal or conservative. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're getting combative. <laughs> but, as well as causation, there's probability and randomness we know now from quantum physics at the micro level. So, cause and effect is led in by chance, indeterminacy, at least at the micro level. <clears throat> All right. Here's the challenge to libertarian free will. This is where things might have a little dicey for people. As liberal as you are. <clears throat> Determinism is the thesis that since everything is caused, there could only be one possible future given the current situation, like now, and the laws of nature. Fairly strong claim that. Turns out it's false. Determinism is false at the micro level because of quantum indeterminacy. All right? So, Q, ah, we escaped that bullet, we dodged that one. Mm, not quite. Why? Because of determinism, the reliable cause and effect regularities that science shows us, especially by ourselves, is a very good approximation when explaining human development and behavior at the macro level. So, the conclusion is, in a given situation, we couldn't have done other than what we did. We couldn't have done otherwise in an actual situation as it played out. If we replay that situation with the causes set up exactly the same, the same effects would happen, the same behavior. This is the thesis of determinism, cause and effect, as applied to ourselves. In a given situation five minutes ago, had you set everything up the same, I would have done exactly the same thing. So, what does this mean? We don't have what philosophers call libertarian or contra-causal free will. That's the CCFW. Libertarian free will is the freedom to transcend the circumstances you're in and to have been able to have done something differently in an actual situation than what you actually did. That came out rather quickly, but I hope it will become clear. I call it contra-causal free will, the free will we don't have because it's a kind of freedom, a kind of capacity that would allow us to transcend natural laws. 
to do something other than what you're doing right now and to have done something else. Why? Because this, you have a causally exempt little decider in, in like a soul or spirit or a mental agent, but you don't have that. That's why you don't have libertarian free will. So this is a, could be a little unsettling, but not to worry. No, all is not lost. The feeling, and this gets to empiricism, the feeling that you could have done otherwise in a situation isn't good evidence for it. Feelings, remember, don't count as very good evidence. There's no public scientific evidence that we have contra-causal free will, the freedom to have done otherwise, in an actual situation. Here, I'll step out. Now, given the situation exactly as it was when I started to step out, could I have done something, something else? No. If the situation had been slightly different, I could have done something otherwise. But the situation wasn't as it was. So, at that very moment, this is what happened, and only what happened. So don't, don't let the feeling of supposing that you could have done it otherwise, after you've done it, delude you into thinking that you could have. Randomness does not help make us authors of our behavior. It doesn't give us control. Chance is not free will. So don't look to indeterminism or chance to give you free will. It doesn't work. David Hume, whose birthday is today, woo, woo. go David, my favorite philosopher. David Hume knew this a long time ago. It's called Hume's Fork. Determinism doesn't get you libertarian free will, nor does indeterminism. Okay? Dennett, Dawkins, Sam Harris, Stephen Pinker, all of these atheists, secularists, debunk, disown, contra causal free will. No one in the scientific philosophical community buys into the freedom that I just said we don't have. So it's okay. There are lots of authorities on our side. And by the way, naturalism is nothing new. Skepticism about free will is, has been happening since Democritus, or before. So, well, yes, since the Buddha. Here's what Sam Harris says in his most recent book. He's got a wonderful 10 page section on free will. He says, no human being stands as author to his own genes or his own upbringing, and yet we have every reason to believe that these factors determine his character throughout his or her life. That's from the Moral Landscape, page 109. So, what I'm saying is not out of the mainstream when it comes to thinking about these issues. It's very much within the mainstream. It's just you may not have got the rule yet. But, here is the big reassurance. And this is what many people forget. And many people misconstrue naturalism, denial of libertarian free will, contra calls of freedom, as to say that moral responsibility and agency do not survive. But they do. Warning, determinism is not a universal excuse. Just because your bad behavior is fully caused does not justify it. There's no running amok allowed. Thank you very much. You won't be excused. Why? We remain moral agents, responsive to moral norms and social sanctions. We still want a safe, peaceful, civilized society. So even though, as science shows us, we're completely caused beings, we don't have this ability to transcend causation, we still remain moral beings. It's in our genes, and fortunately in our culture. Causality does not negate responsibility. We can and must hold each other responsible as a way to cause each other to behave ethically and responsibly. Ethics is an influence on one another. Holding each other responsible is how I get to behave as, you know, I, I'm reasonably ethical, not that. But the only reason I am is because you hold me responsible. You're causing me to behave responsibly. Okay. I just want to emphasize this point so no one leaves here supposing that I've given you license to kill. The judge will not accept determinism as an excuse. There's a character I'm developing called Determinist Cop. And Determinist Cop, when he, he, he pulls you over and he said, Officer, I'm sorry, I simply caused it by speed. And he said, Yeah, I know that. But I'm going to give you a ticket because that's going to cause you to be more careful next time. So I know you're fully determined. But that's not going to get you off the hook, buddy. Determinist cop. You mean making <laughs> determinist. Okay. We remain rational agents, getting back to reason, 
Reason does not stop existing just because we're caused to be rational. You're still able to make choices. You are not out of control. Right now, you're still in control. Your brain is doing what it does so beautifully. Taking in my words, thinking about stuff, making you sit in your chair, somewhat, slumped. But you're still in control. You don't have to run up just because you've heard all my Someone said that I'm fully caused. Well, yeah, you're caused to be rational. In fact, you really have no choice but to behave rationally. And you remain causally affected powerful agents, just as causally affected as the factors which create us. Human agents don't disappear on this view. We're just as real as the environment and genetics out of which we came, right? We have just as much causal power as gravity, as neurotransmitters, as hemoglobin, as political advertisements. We, we still exist as agents and we affect the world, so we don't go away. All right, so moral responsibility in the agency survive. But things do change. Here's where we get into the ethical implications of a science-based worldview naturalism. How ought we behave? That's the question. Well, if there's no freely willing self to take ultimate credit or blame, then responsibility for our actions is distributed, strange as it may seem, and this is deliberately passing the buck, something you're not supposed to do. But I am passing it. I'm passing it on and around to all the factors that created me. You should too, because this is the truth. You didn't choose yourself in any ultimate respect. Responsibility is distributed, and this gives us power, because we can intervene in all the factors that are in play. No one ultimately chooses their character, abilities, or circumstances. It's all the luck of the draw. The fact that we're all liberals here, as I said before, it's a matter of how you were brought up. Now that and your, your peer group, you didn't choose any of that. You're sitting here just as the luck of the draw. Empathy, therefore, I think, and compassion is the conclusion. There but for circumstances go I. I could have been a conservative, but for my genes and environment. Oh my god, think of that. <laughs> so, what do I do? I cut conservatives some slack. They didn't choose to be that way. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> but guess what? It's, there's a little asymmetry here. They're not going to say the same thing about me. Well, that is very likely. <clears throat> Why? Well, we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> a little bit more about compassion first. <clears throat> Seeing that we don't have counter-causal free will helps to undercut reactive emotions such as anger, blame, contempt, whether directed at me or at you. Here's how Spinoza put it. This doctrine of determinism teaches us to hate no one, to despise no one, to mock no one, to be angry with no one, and to envy no one. Now, I should say that Darwin, and Einstein and many other philosophical and scientific luminaries have also said the same thing. There's a page at naturalism.org naturalism called The Argument from Celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, everyone must be for Einstein says, right? Cool. Darwin and Dennett and Dawkins and Harris and Clark <laughs> <laughs> and Spinoza and Buddha, they all deny libertarian free will. So should you. As I was saying, this has strong affinities with Buddhism. The Buddha knew this. The inside of dependent, origin, un, dependent arising, dependent origination. There's no substantial self from here. We are all equally caused beings. This is part of getting from empiricism to equality. We're all equally caused. There are no superior selves out there who made themselves or souls. We're equally at, equally connected to nature no matter who you are, the president to the humblest street sweeper. Okay, what does this do? We become more compassionate in our attitudes and in the way we hold each other responsible. We our, our responsibility practices these days tend to be on the punitive side, I think you'll see if you look at the criminal justice system. So things do change when we take this point of view, this is the naturalistic view of ourselves, in terms of how we hold each other responsible. We'll do so more compassionately, and I believe more effectively.